What up, the world? It's your man's Uncle P, DetroitRap.com in the building, and I'm here with two very talented people, man. Two people from uh, Detroit metropolitan area, man. We got my man Foulmouth and my man Aztec, man. We're going to let Aztec talk about this new record. What we got, Aztec? So, P, as you said, um, new solo record produced entirely by Foulmouth, the genius. Um, we call this one The Lion King, obviously a play off of uh, The Lion King. Basically, it's, uh, it's a long time coming, man. This is uh, my brother in music, man, fucking long time collaborator. Um, I think I've been on every project he's put out. He's been on all mine. It's very, like, streamlined. You see exactly what's going on from front to end. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. You know, in this day and age, I know a uh, file seemed like people working through email, you know, and, and creating projects like that. And, and you addressed it a little bit, but did this project come organically? Did you, you know, email him beats, you know? How, how did this all come together? We've only worked organically. We've never done anything like that. That's like one of the main things with why we were like looked up and we're like, man, why don't we have our group project out yet? Like just us two. Because right. we've all, no matter what it is, like if he's doing something for me or I'm doing something for his shit, it's always organic every single time. Yeah, it's funny. The funny thing about that is, like I'll be at the crib and like I'm just like, wow, mom, man, just send me some shit. Just send me some. You know, I, I want to write some. I want to, you know, email. And he's like, he's like, fuck you. He's like, come over. Right. I live ten minutes away. Get your fucking ass over here. But ultimately, it was, you know, it was for the for the better of the project, the greater good. Right, right. So Lion King, man. I, you know, I checked the record out. It's a phenomenal project. You know, on the way down here, I was bumping it. You know, Aztec. I told you, bro. You you've been dope. For as long as I've known you. So for more, most people, as long as I've been in the game, I could say I've heard improvement. And, man, you, you've just been at that level for forever, bro. Like, And then teaming up with Foulmouth, man, let's talk about some of the records that you got on, on the project. Um, you also got some dope-ass features, man. Let, let's talk about how you got into the features, you know. Did that happen organically, too, or how did that come about? I'll start this answer off, and ultimately he'll finish it because it makes sense. Um, a vast majority of the features on there were already working with him, right? I mean, they were homies, you know what I mean? Like, you know, your constituents, you feel like your coworkers, you know what I mean? Like, Detroit MCs I look up to, bottom line. You know what I mean? I'm, we're fans before anything. I mean, Kid Vish is a huge one. You know, he, we got we got two verses from him. Uh, Five Mouth did, was it like seven or eight on The Purge? Yeah, I think, I think seven, seven. Seven, yeah, which I mean, which is a huge look. A huge look, you know. You, I mean, you think about, you know, some of the people that are listening to that shit and, like, you know, uh, the Fat Killers, you know. The only one we didn't get was Marv. But, yeah, we got we got Bang Belushi, the brother. You know, we got uh, we got Fat Father, and we got King Gordy. Um, if you motherfuckers who haven't heard that yet, the Overture, you're in for something there. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for the content. I won't apologize. I'll just say, just, you know, don't play that shit around your little kids and... Or do it. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> no. hey, I grew up, you know, I grew up listening to Isham and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah. Five out, yeah. Every bit of it was organic. That's all you talked about. Things being organic. That was like the main thing with this is everybody that's on here is people we work with closely and or going to be putting out middle vegan music projects, okay. music projects. Um, it's important, you know, like uh, and, and we wanted to keep it in house with the people we worked with strictly, the people that are surrounding us. Right. And uh, we knew this album was going to be low with features because when we originally put it together. The pre kill actually, we almost made a longer album and we made the choice to make it two projects. I was going to be where I did half the album and the other half was going to be other producers. But when we started seeing like how different the sound was between the tracks, if we separated it, we decided to go that route. And then actually from like, Maybe August till three weeks ago, we were still redoing tracks and adding new tracks. But we promoted the album like it was done. But behind the scenes, we were still busting ass, making new tracks. Because once we had that sound down, because we had like, I think we had like 10 or 11. But then we looked at it and we were like, all right, not this one, not this one, not this one, not this one. It, it, and then we, we pre-planned everything. All right, we're putting him on this one, this one on this one. And we knew we, what we were going for was... I think Tex got like a great mixtape feel to it to his his music. Right. Well, 
I didn't want to I didn't want to lose that because he's bar crazy. So we wanted to try to make it more album feeling while it was still that. Right, okay. So we went and got Aaron Taylor, got a couple hooks. Went and got Gordy, did did a, a dark track with him. We wanted it to feel like an album, but not lose the aspect of him strictly spitting bars. This is this is bar crazy. The whole point of this album is Line King. We want I, I want people to know he's as good as anybody in Detroit when it comes to bars. Right. And I I feel like I we hit that aspect. It still feels like an album. It still feels like you're just getting hit with bars though. You know what I mean? You know, the way everything comes in after one another, you know, your classic fade outs and fade ins with with what you do there. Um yeah, that's that's that yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know it, you know, and that's the thing. Like, not, nowadays, people just slapping one record, you know, after the other. There's no thought process, you know, in things, you know, because we're in such a single world now. It it don't fit, but let's talk. Yeah, it's so short, but, you know, it's, it's not like you got five-minute joints on there and all that stuff, man. You in and out. The beats, you know, hit you crazy, and then you on to the next one. Let's talk about, you know, some of y'all favorite tracks on there, and and why are they your favorites? For me, I like 270 a lot, and it's not because I'm on the hook. I really don't care if I would have been on the track. What I like about it is, is you see a lot of cats now. I think we had a little talk about this. They put out these joints where it's it's just a sample, and some of them are so good on it. It's like amazing to me. You're like. The fact that there isn't a lot of feeling behind the beat, yet the track is fulfilled, that, that's hard to do. So when, when you see people bitching to complain, they're like, oh, he's just rapping over a loop. If somebody kills that shit and the track feels great and you want to keep listening to it, good for them. Because most of those people complain and could never do that. Well, this is my way of trying to, uh, trying to do that for tech. When we came up with the idea, I hate to use Mar Rock Mars as an example, but like we wanted that type of feel. But not like his. Our own. So I found a Spanish joint that I felt like could sit like that. Everybody else is using regular soul samples, and there's always big vocals. I went and found something completely different that still gave you that type of feeling. Right. Then I added a little more to it. I made the bass behind it really big, put a big kick behind it. But yet, it still feels wide open. Right. It still okay. almost feels like just a sample. Right. I want it to sound different, feel different, yet be in the... Um, still be in the sequence of of those type of tracks like it if you heard those type of right. yes it still feels yeah. like that style but i don't i don't want to bite nobody i want to be able to do it our own way and i and being able to do that i feel like we did our own thing on that like if let's say uh, another spanish artist comes out and he rocks something like that right. Right. i think we're the first to do it right. so right. if you hear him going straight over a sample like we beat you to it man That's dope. That's dope. or anybody who rocks over it in, in, in that manner you know what i mean give me uh, right now, I'd probably say Ricky Pierce because Ricky Pierce is going to be the next rate we're dropping. And he, that's like, for me, I get over all the beats. Okay. I get so used to them. I made them. Some of them, he might not have grabbed. It might be four months old. I've heard it 609 times. Right, right. So I pick the tracks that, that as I'm done, as I get done recording them and start mixing them, that just feel the best. It might not, my opinions might differ from people people's opinions on beats. But I'm going to pick the joints he makes me feel best about when I'm listening to him rap. Right. And uh, he, he destroys that track, so, yeah. Okay, what's the next video to go by to? Um, the uh the title track, Lion King, uh gets me uh you know pretty good. I, I got Man. to spit got to spit uh three verses back to back in there. Uh, there's a beat change that shit I love, you know, and you can tell there's a different fluctuation in mood. Um, I played that three times in a row before <laughs> I could even. Get yeah, thank you, man. I got, I'm sitting at my desk like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that shit's and it's got a, that's got, that's got a certain vibe that, you know, we were looking for, just something a little bit darker, you know what I mean? Like, um, and there's also going to be, I enjoy knowing that this is, I'm, I'm going to say some shit that not everybody's going to get, you know what I mean? Like, I, I enjoy sometimes explaining punchlines to people, right. and they go, oh, okay, 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 right. you know. Um, aside from that, like, I, it's like the the... The collaborative tracks I really fucking like because the way he sets them up, you know what I mean? Like, I'm already knowing that I got to come in with fucking haymakers every time. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm not going to, you know. I look up to a motherfucker, respect them all day. But you ain't taking, nah. You ain't taking me off track. You know what I mean? So, like, when um, I'm blackout, fuck, man. Uh, Fat Father recorded his verse probably, like, a month after I did the Bar Bully release party. I don't want to talk about how long ago that was. Sorry to Fat Father. I, I, I made it. Yeah, I, I lost his verse like three fucking times. Damn. I was like, yo, just send it again. Send it again. He's looking at me like, 
So, you know, just back on the grindstone. I, I, I like that, that competition, whether it's friendly competition or whatever it is. That's hip hop. Yeah. Bottom line, you know, you want to be, you know, you want to shine. Right. Right. You know, you, but, you know, obviously on, you know, group projects like that, you want to shine together and like, then we brought in Hatch. He added a completely different element to it. Um, Fat Father, he spit a hook, like this little mini bar hook. And I knew I couldn't really relate to what he was saying on that. And I couldn't, you know, repeat what he was saying. Uh, when you you hear the content, you know why. So I was like, wait a minute, I got an idea. So we'll all spit these little mini hooks, you know. And it added just a completely different element right, to to the track. Anything with Bang Belushi, I'm in love. You know what I mean? Right. Um, we got shout out to Bang Boo's brothers coming soon. But uh, we, I I show up to sessions at like 7 a.m. during the summertime, and he's already two, three, four tracks deep. You know what I mean? There's a couple bottles of pop off rolling around the basement, and I'm like, let's go. Like this, this is my this is my area. I'm down. You know what I mean? Let's get it. I'm sitting crafting over here a little bit, trying to get you know what I mean, in and out of punchlines. And he's just like, I'm ready to go, you know. Right. And it's like the same shit he did on Jerry Ball, um, the hook he spit. I mean, it's just there's so much like just comedic value to what he does, but underneath that, it's just it's it's, it's just grit and just Detroit. You know what I mean? So some of the solo joints too, you know. But again, I I, I like that element of going heads up with somebody and seeing what that produces on the track and brings the best out of everybody. You know, Middle finger music. That's the label this is under, man. What we gonna do to make sure that this record is heard by everybody we can? That guy right there. That's the man right there. That was a perfect question. Yo, 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 what up, though? Out there doing his thing. He does his thing, man. He makes a lot of our opportunities happen. We try to make the best music we possibly can, and he's so good at just put it in the forefront for us, you know? That's definitely needed. Tell us something about this guy we don't know. All right, here's a real good one. Actually, this is great. Don't um, worry, you'll get it. And I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm correct on this when I'm breaking this down. I'm sure somebody somewhere in the hardcore scene might be offended or something. But all right, so I don't know if you know this or not, but the hardcore scene, music, hardcore, yeah, breakdowns, crazy screaming. Monsters, punch each other. Tech's been a front man for 15 years in bands. Yeah. God, he's got videos and shit, and, and, and some people miss that. Well, here's here's a different element to that. A lot of cats who come from hardcore, like if it's one or the other, like uh, like a rapper crosses over, or does hardcore stuff. I think Necro's done some hardcore stuff. Even Vinny Paz has too, right? Yeah. I, I can't recall exactly what, but I know they have. And there's been a hardcore artist who, who crossed over on onto the same scene, onto the hip hop scene. Tech is le legitimately this is this is a national scene. Right. He's the only true MC. Slash frontman who's actually legitimately came up in both, so like he's not like a like somebody who crossed over to another to another genre to show he can do it. He legitimately is it. He's the he's the only one possibly nationally to do this. Man, so I, I want you to get to your question, but fuck, why? I mean, when when are we gonna? When is the <laughs> hip hop scene gonna get a dose of this shit, man? Ah. <sighs> I don't. I don't know what's going on with with uh right, with we'll that anymore. Because if I gotta motivate this shit, because I, I love that shit and I yeah. can see that shit, that's dope. I'll, I'll show you a video here in a little okay. bit. Something we don't know about Sai. This isn't on obviously on that 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 type of level, but um, Five Mouth really fucked me up when I met him. Uh, like I consider myself a fuck like a sports guy. Well versed in sports, right. the history of sports, you know statistics. I grew up playing fucking baseball, football, whatever right, the fuck right, it is, right? right? But I noticed early on, like I would say some shit, like we were at Jimbo's crib just recording like deadbeat shit, and I'd say something like, "Oh yeah, I remember, uh, you know, whatever Jerry Rice had, uh, you know, whatever my touchdown." Was. And he'd go, "No, it was like uh, I think it was actually like twelve that year." And I'd look at him like, "What the fuck are you talking about, right?" Five Mouth has a fucking registry of. It's, it's a fucking... Remember Back to the Future, the sports almanac? Right. Right? right How it just right. seems like a fucking cheat code? Right. Right. right, This motherfucker would tell you a stat from probably all four major sports from, I don't know, what? Mid-80s up till now. Damn. Till right now. Wow. And, like, every now and then I'll test him and try to, like, sneak something by, like, just a false... And he's like, no, no, no. No, 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 that, that, that was, you know... And I'm just like, man, this, it just never fucking misses. Never misses. And uh, baseball, football, basketball. I mean, obscure, P. Like, obscure right. shit right. that nobody should know. Like on some Jeopardy type 
Exactly, exactly. If they had like Jeopardy for motherfucker, like savants on some like sports shit, my man, we wouldn't even be here right now. We'd be rich. That's you know what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out your so- sh- social media information. Um, Where they can find the podcast. Aztec the Barfly on everything. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, probably in your in your your stepmom's cell phone. Uh, I'm in there. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm in there. Middle Finger Music 313 on Twitter, um, dot com, and what's the other one? Instagram. Um, but don't get it confused. And I got to make sure motherfuckers know this shit. MFM, right? I wasn't, I wasn't hip. And this is another, this is a curveball. I figured out. MFM is a big thing in the porno industry. Okay. Oh, <laughs> male, female, male. Oh, right. So I'm like, big up MFM. And I'm like, wait a minute, man. Hold the fuck up. I'm like. We're taking this acronym out. We're gonna spell the whole shit out. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, okay. Yeah, we don't we don't need two guys. So <laughs> let's eliminate that right off rip. <laughs> uh, same shit, man. Uh, Twitter, foul mouth three one three. Uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Or you catch me as foul mouth or, or or my my real alias Shade Web on uh, Facebook. I'm actually on there being myself as a human being. So if you ever want to just have a regular chat, I'm there. Uh, we're on, we're on everything known to man. Uh, any site possible you want to find our music, go find it. Spotify. Spotify and Bandcamp is where I try to send everybody. Go to Spotify. Go to Bandcamp. You're going to find both of us. All you got to do is put the names in there. Yeah. Aztec or Foul Mouth is going to come up. Dope. That's what's up. Heard it here for, first with Aztec, the Barfly, my man, Foul Mouth. Yo! DetroitRap.com. We up out of here. If you don't fuck with us, we don't care Cause you know we got our middle fingers up in the air But if you ride and you're feeling the vibe Then put your middle fingers up in the air